Hi, this is Alan for ADSR, and today we're going to be looking at creating a kick drum sound using Dynamics processors only. So typically when you're, I guess when you're creating drum sounds, you'll, for me anyway, I, I tend to rely on synthesizers a lot and synthesize the sounds, or you might rely on samples. What we're going to look at today is shaping drum sounds only using Dynamics processors. Typically, we use compressors and gates to control the dynamics of the sound, add more punch, add more clarity, clean up some noise. Today, we're just going to use them solely just for creating or shaping the transients in the sound. So to start off with, we're going to use for our source is just going to be a sign tone being generated from an operator. So I have no processing turned on at the minute. We'll just have a listen to what it sounds like. So yeah, pretty dull. I'm just going to use the, you wonder why Ableton looks a bit different. I'm using the Live 10 beta, but the functionality is going to be exactly the same. I'm just using the, the native compressor and gate, which I find very useful for this kind of task. Regarding the controls, we're going to be compressing it quite hard, getting a lot of kind of pumping, which often when you're using a compressor in a conventional way, you want to try and avoid that kind of sound, but we're going to take advantage of it today. So I've got the ratio turned up all the way. I've got makeup gain turned on. I'm going to use it in RMS mode. And I'm going to just use the attack and release to, to shape the actual sounds. The only con other control in the compressor that I, I might look at is the envelope control here. So there's two modes, and this affects the how the release responds. So you have a linear mode, which is tends to, uh, when you're using the a compressor more as an effect, you tend to get more kind of pumping artifacts in linear mode, whereas in logarithmic mode, it tends to be a bit smoother. So sometimes it can be useful for transient shaping, but we'll, we'll A, B it when we're going through today, and you'll hear the, the different results. Sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's more dramatic. So we'll start off in linear mode, and let's just hear A, B, what we're getting here. Give it a bit of volume. So you can already hear there's quite a bit of shaping going on. If I adjust my attack and release here. Obviously, if you turn the attack up too much, you're just going to let the, the original sound all the way through, and that's where it can kind of get quite loud. If you set them too fast, you tend to make the compressor work. It's trying to work too hard and it tends to distort. So again, normally that might be viewed as a unwanted side effect, but in, in this case, because we're working in more of a sign, sound design mode, it can be useful. So you can hear I'm getting some nice kind of click sounds at the beginning there. And you'll notice, also notice when you're listening to it, that the click is not consistent through each of the, the kick drum hits. Bring it down in volume. So the reason that is, is that if we just go in and look, look at the kick drum part, you'll notice that um, some of them are, sp are more spaced out. And the ones that are kind of closer on top of each other tend to have less of a click. So what's happening there is, and because the compressor is working quite hard, um, the ones that are close together, is not it's not returning back to its original um, volume position. So it's kind of not taking the same attack and release shape as some of the other sounds. So if I, sl if I slow the tempo right down, say something like 20, let me go back and look at that. You can hear that they all have the same properties. So again, you might look at that as a as a, an error or something unwanted, but I think it adds a bit more of a of a human feel or a bit more variety to the actual sound. So working with drum sounds in this way, they might form the core element of your your kick drum sound, or they might be just part of a layer. So there's you know there's not a pressure to create the ultimate drum sound with this. It just forms a part of it. Although sometimes you can come across some interesting sounds 
which can, can work well just by themselves. So if we just, we'll have a look at the different envelope modes here. Just punching a bit too, a bit too much through there in logarithmic mode. It's a bit snappier there in, in linear mode. So say I'm happy with that sound there. You notice that on some of the notes there's there's quite a bit of sustain. And this is where the gate kind of comes in handy. Without it, and then with it. When we're using a very fast attack there, sometimes you can hear this clicking sound come back into it. Sometimes that's useful because it kind of simulates the, you know, on an acoustic drum, the beater of the drum hitting the drum. But if you want to avoid that, you can either experiment with the look ahead parameter, so that kind of looks ahead to the signal that's coming in. Um, if you have extreme settings with your processor, it allows the, the, the processor to respond better. But often when we're using this technique, we're not looking for a smooth response, we're more looking for non-linearities, distortion. You can always just tweak the, the attack time as well and you can get, get that kind of parameter under control. You can also, depending on, the, maybe not so much on a kick drum, but you can also experiment A kind of more musical way on, on the release there. So again, that's just on the kick drum sound. On the other track here that I played at the beginning, that uses the, the, those same processes um, to create a snare drum and an actual hi-hat. So if we listen to it all together, we go in and listen to the hi-hat one there. We can do a similar technique to what, what I was doing there on the kick drum to get a more Get a balance between a, an open and a closed hi hat. You might want to record something like that. And so on. And so let's while we're while we're still in, re in record there, let's go over and maybe have a look at the, the kick drum. So you can get kind of more musical control over your dynamics. Sometimes it, it can take a bit of experimenting to get that just exactly the way you want it to, but you know, you can build up layers. And then, as I said before, often you can combine other drum sounds on top of that. So hopefully you found that useful and I'll talk again soon.